have you ever had one of those, this is the last time moments? <laughs> when you say, this is the last time I'm gonna do something I don't wanna do. Moments like, this is the last time I'll work for a job that doesn't value my input. Or, this is the last time I'll have a negative balance in my bank account. There are moments like this in which we know we need to make a change because if we don't, we just might lose it. That's what it was like for me just a few years ago when I was thinking back about a dream my husband and I had of running our own company, but we were barely scraping enough money together to pay our bills at the end of the month, let alone fund a business. And that's when I said, this is the last time that I'm gonna have more month left than money. <laughs> we were on the edge of despair and something had to give, but what was it going to be? Now, I didn't have an answer for that question at the time, but there was one thing I was certain to of, that no one was coming to save me or my family from our situation. I needed a plan to save myself. Now they say hindsight is 2020. And looking back to all that's happened in my life since that time, I know exactly how that plan unfolded, which has led me to where I am today, the co-owner of a multi-million dollar brand. For one, I was fed up and used that frustration to fuel my drive. Then I changed my mindset. Finally, I got started with creating my own opportunities. Now the first step in learning to save yourself is being fed up. You have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> when I was thinking about a plan of how to ignite my career as an entrepreneur, I had a job and a side hustle as a freelance designer. I'd give my all to my clients, came to the table ready to work and pour into their businesses to help them flourish. Then boom, they dragged their feet, wouldn't use my suggestions and were slow to take action. Every time I'd walk away feeling frustrated, why didn't they value my expertise and ideas? What was wrong with these people? Then it hit me, they weren't the problem. I was. Instead of using my talents to build my own business, I was giving all I had to everyone else. <laughs> then had the nerve to be mad when I didn't get the recognition, <laughs> much less the commas in my bank account that I thought I deserved. <laughs> then there was one time in my job, y'all. I decided to take initiative on a project and <laughs> I was so hyped to show my boss the breadth of my talents. The project took two weeks and was intense, but I knew this was my chance to shine. I showed my boss when it was all said and done, and she said, that's nice. Said, that's nice. <laughs> that's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted more. And in that moment, I said, this is the last time I'll put my energy and effort into a, someone else's projects. I stopped looking for validation from other people and started creating my own opportunities. I decided to come up with a brand and use my design skills to launch a t-shirt company. And in my first year, I earned $300,000. Wow. 
That one decision to take action and use my frustration as fuel literally turned my life around. Now, the next step in learning to save yourself is to change your mindset. None of the messages that you'll hear matter until you change your mindset. Close your eyes for a second. I want you to imagine the life of your dreams. What are you doing? Where are you going? Who are you with? Are you thinking of a better career, a nicer home, a vacation for your family? Open your eyes. Now, let's think about that vision for a second. Did it seem possible or too unrealistic? Now, if you said unrealistic, then huh, you've got some mindset work to do because I'm here to tell you that anything is possible. Don't allow your insecurities and fear of rejection hold you back from pursuing the life of your dreams. It can happen, but you have to take responsibility on what you haven't done and your role in why you, things aren't happening the way you think they should. Now, this is going to require a shift, so that means you're going to have to change your circle of friends. You're going to have to seek out new experiences and information. You'll have to learn everything there is to know about a specific subject. And then you need to connect with dreamers who fill your spirit and push the boundaries of what's possible. Now, this happened to me in about 2010. I wouldn't consider myself lost, but I was definitely looking for something. And I started attending these social media and tech meetups in my area. And I didn't know what I was looking for, but I knew I had to do something. And that's when I fell in love with social media and being online. <laughs> but by then, I was married, <laughs> kids, responsibility, bills, husband. I couldn't just start my career over from the bottom. So I did something a little unconventional. I decided to intern and volunteer with the top social media strategists in my area and learn everything there is I needed to know. I didn't know where that information was going to take me at this time, but I just knew I had to make a change. Now, when it comes to my journey, all I ever wanted to do was to provide a better lifestyle for my family. And what we've been able to accomplish has been so much more. The better my situation became, the bigger I started to dream, and the harder I knew I had to work. But that's the best part about saving yourself. <laughs> your dreams are literally within your grasp. The potential is up to you. So let's get out of our comfort zones and start creating our own opportunities. Now, creating our own opportunities isn't as hard as people make it seem. You just need a little bit of creativity and confidence. So how do you get mobilized? Take a look around. It doesn't matter if you have a job or business. This is how you align your passion with your goals and create your own opportunities. First, you need to think about a problem currently in business and really, you know, think about how you can solve that specific issue. Creating goals requires you to be resolution oriented. No, you don't need to be an expert, but you do need to be well versed at one specific topic. Learn as much as you can. Constantly increasing your skill set will not only open you up for better opportunities, but it will give you more confidence. And confidently speaking about any topic will allow people to see you as the go-to person. 
I did the same for myself about two years ago. After spending years building profitable e-commerce brands, I knew my next opportunity was right around the corner. I decided that I wanted to teach other women how to build successful online brands and understand the power they had to change the direction of their lives. Now, if you wanna make a shift in your role, responsibilities, or business, you'll need to define a value add. No, there's no time for second guessing yourself now. You need to make a goal, create a plan, establish a timeline, and let's go. There's no time to drag your feet when creating new ideas. You need to create a plan and make sure you're getting a new task completed every day. That way you can focus on making progress and have weekly accountability checks. That's one thing I always tell my sons. <laughs> I got four of y'all. <laughs> you can lie to me, you can lie to your dad, but you can't lie to yourself. Because when you're laying in that bed at night, you know whether you've put the necessary work in to receive the results you're expecting. And either you've done the work or you haven't. Now I'm challenging you to do the work. Because there are no amount of workshops, webinars, conferences, one-on-ones, meetups, or mentorships that will replace actually doing the work. Be your own hero and save yourself. Be fed up and use that frustration to fuel your drive. Change your mindset and create your own opportunities because remember, nobody's coming to save you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.